this is an overview of this Challenger 9,000 pound rated home uh, automotive lift that can be used for storage and also for working on cars. This is the CL4P9S, which is 9,000 pound rated. Challenger also makes a 7,000 pound rated lift. This one is the S model, which is a standard model. There's also an X, which is extra tall, gives you a little bit more headroom underneath uh, to have larger SUVs or larger cars parked underneath. And uh, I believe a W version, which is extra wide for, for extra wide cars. Uh, for my purposes, this is, this is fine, the standard 9000S model. Um, so we'll go over the features. I have the lift uh, installed in a fairly standard size two car residential garage, just a little bit wider than the standard 20 feet to give me a little bit of extra room. The ceilings on this bay are nine and a half feet, which you could see would be a little bit too tight for uh, having a car of any particular uh, height that, uh, that, that isn't very short parked. Uh, stacked on each other. The bay where the lift is installed has an extended roof line up to about 12 and a half feet, uh, which follows the pitch of the roof line there to give me more headroom. So uh, the lift is currently on the highest setting for storage, which still gives adequate headroom with an Audi S3 parked underneath. And then there's still a few feet of headroom above the GT4, allowing it to clear. Also installed um, jack shaft garage door openers to eliminate the garage door opener being in the way above the car. So the jack shaft gets installed actually directly on the wall itself. They're out of the way. The control unit for the lift can be placed either on the driver's forward side post of the lift or on the rear passenger side back here on this post. I chose to put it in the location I did just so it would be out of the way and not bumped into with uh, people coming in and out of the garage. Uh, runs off hydraulic fluid, obviously. Um, Unlike the bend pack, it doesn't require an air supply to release the locks, uh, so a little bit more convenient. The motor control unit, again, sits on this far post and can be oriented either on the side or on the back of the post. I chose to have it installed on the back. Um, the button is here that is pressed to raise the lift, and there is the release handle, which you press to uh, to lower the lift uh, after it's been raised off the lock stops. First, the lift is raised off the lock stops. And the locks are released. And the lift is lowered.
for a car as low as the GT4 or something like that, Corvette or something else that has very low ground clearance, the standard uh, ramps that come with the lift uh, don't provide quite enough ground clearance to prevent the front of the car from scraping. So Challenger sells uh, accessory optional extended aluminum ramps uh, 48 inches long, which uh, allow the car to make it up onto the lift. The other option being using something like a race ramp. And I placed uh, a couple mirrors in the garage on the wall uh, where the nose of the car is to give me a better idea of exactly where the tires are lining up with the, the ramps or the runways as I'm coming on and going off. So it's helpful to your vision and your perspective. Other lift accessories include these plastic drip trays uh, that can be moved or slid along the, the pathways or, or inner tracks of the ramps. That way, if there's any kind of issue with leakage of fluids from the car above, they get caught in the drip tray and don't get on the car below. And also, uh, rolling bridge jacks. Uh, these are the ones that are rated at 3,500 pounds. I got a pair of them. Um, they also make a 4,500 pound rated rolling bridge jack. Um, as the lift comes all the way down to the floor, the bridge jack actually tends to then support its own weight. So it has rollers that roll along the sides. It actually won't roll until the lift is back up in the air and then the entire weight of the bridge jack is being supported by the lift and then it pretty easily rolls back and forth. The arms of the bridge jacks extend outwards to go to the jacking points. Of the car and can be adjusted on either side. Unfortunately, I found that on all of our cars, the width of the arm extension is not enough to reach the jacking point um, and so I'm working on a solution for that now. And I'm now putting the Audi onto the lift. Again using the mirrors to try to judge where the front tires are relative to the sides of the ramps. And I ended up in a pretty good spot. With the S3, I end up with just a few inches of room from the edge of the tires to the edge of the ramps. I'm a little bit closer on this side than I am over on this side. On this side, I have a little bit more room. Thank you. 
always want to make sure that you take the extended ramps off of the lift before you raise it again. And to raise the car, we simply press the button on the control unit that raises the car, again, making sure that everything's clear and that the extended ramps have been taken off and, uh, and put away. <laughs> Repetitive popping noise is the, the lock stops. Lift ends up hitting every few inches uh, as a safety precaution. So uh, again, every few inches there are automatic lock stops as you go up. the top, the very top above the top lock stop, we'll press the release handle to release the lift down onto the lock stop so that the weight of the lift is not resting on the cables and the hydraulics. And you can see, confirm that the cables have gone slack. Here's a closer view of the rolling bridge jacks. And again, since the lift is up in the air now, uh, the weight of the bridge jacks is actually properly on the, that inside railing of the ramps or runways. So you can grab the handle, slide it back and forth, move it into position wherever you want it. And then once it's in position, you tighten the knob, and I do not have the uh, the air operated one, uh, but rather just the one that is uh, that's hand pump operated. And as you can see, as we do this, it's starting to lift up in a scissor manner to where it needs to be, and then when you want to release it, you just turn the knob to release. It's pretty tight. <laughs> and even with the Audi, which is obviously quite a bit of a taller car than the GT4, uh, there's still plenty of headroom clearance, probably a good two feet or so above the roof line to the ceiling. But again, with a standard 10 or 11 foot garage ceiling, it might be a little bit tight. One concern of mine when I was researching the rolling bridge jacks was whether or not there would be enough ground clearance for uh, the car to drive over them when they're in their retracted or resting position. Uh, you can see with the Audi there's plenty of room, probably a good four inches or so, and my Audi's actually lowered on, uh, on lowering springs, so it's a little bit on the low side, but plenty of room for the Audi, and actually the GT4 clears it nicely too. Uh, I just put the, I put one of them up near the front and the other bridge jack and I'm not using it, kind of put it towards the center of the car. The lowest point of the GT4 are the plastic uh, rear brake cooling scoops that, that sit underneath the car uh, and the, they just clear the tops of the bridge jack. So since that's the rearmost part of the car on the GT4, I just moved the bridge jack up more towards the center of the car so it's not an issue at all.
So overall, I've been very, very happy with the Challenger lift. Uh, it's been very convenient. Uh, obviously, doubles the amount of storage that you could have in one bay of the garage, um, uh, provided you do have the, the ceiling height for it. Um, the, uh, again, it's, it's proven to be reliable. The, within a couple weeks of me installing it, I did need an adjustment done on the cables because the, uh, the front lock stops were not locking on the top setting with the Audi on it. Uh, the back lock stops would lock, but the fronts wouldn't. So uh, that just required a simple adjustment of the cables. Um, and since then, over the last few months, it's been fine. It's been working great. Um, the local dealer who installed it for me tells me that it requires, a, or they recommend a yearly service just to check the um, check the the cables and all the connections, make sure everything's tight, and also to uh, check the oil and potentially change the hydraulic oil every year. Obviously a very convenient thing to have, uh, provided you do have the ceiling height for it, it, it doubles the amount of storage uh, that you can have in one bay, which is great. Uh, relatively easy to use, and once you've used it a few times, you get used to the routine and it's pretty fast to switch cars. Um, I plan on using the rolling bridge jacks also to, um, to do wheel swaps uh, from back and forth between winter and summer. Uh, tires for the cars and also to do brake work probably, uh, pad changes on the GT4 uh, on my own. Um, once I get a solution for figuring out how to get extension pieces for the rolling bridge jacks. It's a little bit frustrating that, that Challenger makes those in such a way that they don't, they aren't wide enough for any type of modern unibody car that has very specific pickup points, uh, jacking points, you know, fairly wide out. Um, underneath the car, seem, they seem to be more designed for something like a vintage uh, 60s muscle car or a, a body on frame car that might have narrower frame pickups uh, for, for jacking points. So, um, you know, it's given that a lot of people have more modern cars in terms of functionality, not functional at all, unfortunately. So uh, I'm working on a solution to try to get um, extension pieces for the arms for the rolling bridge jacks uh, so that they're they can actually work. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll provide an update uh, for that once once I get that figured out. Um, but overall, I've been very happy with it. Uh, went ahead and did the 9,000 pound rating, just a little bit more expensive than the 7,000 pound lift. So overall, very, very happy with it. I uh, hope this helps, uh, helps people out there. Thanks for watching. I had a lot of questions about this when uh, I was first investigating it and looking to do it. For my home, so I hope this was helpful to uh, to people who have had questions about that. See you next time.